Well, the opening round of the RNG British Talent Cup here in Navarra saw race two getting underway this morning with Julian Correa on pole position. But the question was, would he hold it? The answer was no. Philip Soroviak going around his outside and Ryan Frost also coming through on one of the Fiber Tech Hondas to make some good progress in the opening stages. As it then began to settle down, we had Lucas Brown, Emmanuel Brinton, Julian Correa, and also Philip Soroviak all fighting for position. This is in the first running of the race. Unfortunately, the red flag was brought out after this crash. A big, frightening high side for Josh Bannister and then Samuel Munson being an innocent victim in that. Both riders thankfully were up and okay. The race was red flagged and restarted with an eight lap duration. The results of which for the grid were taken on lap four. Once it all began to settle down, we saw Correa sending his way on the inside of Soroviak. We saw Mason Foster keeping a watching brief on proceedings as well. And this was the drag to the line that settled it. Whilst Brinton and Correa were knocking seven bells out of each other, Soroviak slid his way through on the inside to take the victory. Well, welcome along to race three of the RNG British Talent Cup here at the Circuit of Navarra. Really looking forward to seeing what is going to happen here over the course of this 14-lap race. Philip Soroviak it is who will start this one on pole position, but here is the back of the second row of the grid. It's Ronnie Harris on the Kavara Project's RS Racing Machine. He is fresh off the back of finishing inside the top ten this morning. Emmanuel Brinton, we saw him going head-to-head -head and elbow-to-elbow and elbow, wheel wheel, um Wheel bar, to wheel bar rather, at handlebar to handlebar with Julian Correa earlier on this morning and eventually missing out on victory. Here's Mason Johnson at the head of the second row of the grid as well. The first row of the grid is occupied by this man here, Lucas Brown in the Sencat talent team Honda. See how he is going to fare. He's been there and thereabouts so far this weekend, but he's been denied victory on a couple of occasions so far. Julian Correa won race one yesterday. Unlucky to miss out on it after tussling with Brinton earlier on. And then Philip Soroviak fresh off the back of that victory and also the fastest lap in the race this morning as well gives him pole position. Well, Gracie, the fans are watching on here for this one. It's going to be a 14-lapper, and the riders are going to get the formation lap underway here today. I think we're probably expecting a bit of uh, what we had this morning here, James. Yeah, I think you can expect that from most uh, British Talent Cup races, especially with a long straight like this. Slipstream in really, really important. It tends to keep groups together, if not the whole field. So you'll get groups of six or seven or five, or, and then a bit of a gap, then another uh, large group. So uh, great racing, actually. Um, a few uh, sort of moments where you were sort of uh, hat in your mouth, uh, especially banging handlebars down the straight coming out of the last corner. Uh, and these bikes, not as much power as the bigger bikes, as you would expect, but still doing the best part of 140 miles an hour down that straight. Yeah, they're not slow machines, these, nope. despite only being single cylinder 250cc bikes. And yeah, looking forward to seeing what is going to happen over the course of this race because, uh, well, as you can imagine, it is going to be very close and very exciting as it has been throughout the first two races of the year. Julian Correa, some 12 points ahead of Lucas Brown. Ryan Frost is in the mix there as well. Just a point now ahead of Philip Soroviak, who was first on the board here this morning uh, after a DNF yesterday being involved in a crash with Emmanuel Brinton. So 25 on the door for Soroviak, and he'll be looking to try and capitalise on that here this afternoon. Here is a grid, though, for the third and final race of the British Sun Cup this weekend. Philip Soroviak on pole position with Julian Correa and Lucas Brown alongside on that front row. Row two is Mason Foster, Emmanuel Brinton, and then Ronnie Harris. The third row, Ryan Frost, Charlie Huntingford, and Ollie Walker. Row four, Clayton Edmonds, Jack Burrows, and Scott McPhee. Row five, Harrison Mackay, Harley McKay, Ben Jaliff. Row six is Dan Goodman, Peter Willis, and George Bowes. Then you've got row seven with Alexander Rowan, who's had um, good flashes of pace so far this weekend. Josh Raymond and Eli Banish from company. Then it's Jones, Harris, and King. Row nine is Charlie Barnes, Azir Devine and Rahish Kantri. And then Samuel Munson will line up at the very back of the field in 29th place. Just a bit of housekeeping for you. No Josh Bannister here in this one. After the knock to the head he took this morning, he has been declared unfit. And that, uh, to my mind, sounds like the right call. I went and saw his crash over earlier, James, and there was a big old crack in it. Yeah, and that's we saw the crash. He went down on his back. That flicked his, the back of his head onto the track. They're all in uh, great kit, these lads. Uh, but when you've had a whack that's uh, damaged your helmet like that, it's uh, a good thing to sit out, I think. Yeah, riders now making their way on to the grid. Keep to see what Samuel Munson can do, actually, from 28th position as well, because he's shown good pace so far this weekend. And he's got the best nickname. Absolutely, yeah, the Munson burner. <laughs> Can't beat that, can you? You'll win it. It's really good. Um, 
wind's picking up a little bit here as well. It looks like it's just getting a little bit breezy. I know these are small, is. small and light bikes as well. Yeah, in the afternoon, uh, the wind always builds up in this part of the world. It's straight into their face as you look at them now. And it's quite breezy. I would say maybe 15, 18 miles an hour straight in the face down at start and finish straight. And that will have a big, uh, will make a big difference. It'll actually make being behind somebody in the slipstream more effective. Well, there is Philip Soroviak just taking a look over his shoulder. Likewise, Julian Correa as well as the 28 riders take their places on the grid for the final time here this weekend. The green flag is waved at the back. It is all eyes to the five red lights. Soroviak on pole position, trying to make it two wins from two. Red lights are on, lights are out, and we're underway. Good start then from Soroviak. Not bad from Correa, but he gets dragged, out dragged by Lucas Brown as they head down towards the first corner. Who's going to get the advantage and who's going to take the whole shot? Keep an eye out for Ryan Frost there. He's got a meteoric start from the third row of the grid, and he's up through into about second place there on the uh, Fiber Tech Honda as they all manage to filter their way through into these decreasing radius right handers, though. The upshot it is Soroviak who leads from Brown, from Frost, or is that Correa? because it looked like the American was up through on his inside and indeed he is, he's now back, back up into third. Or Brinton there picking the pocket of Ryan Frost as well into five. That was a harsh moment at five was that actually. Yeah, Mason Foster also decided to try and take advantage of the opportunity that was there as well. So getting roughed up a little bit here is Ryan Frost after that very strong start to the race. So on the brakes we go in towards turn eight and out of the corner now. This is where we'll see the slipstream coming into effect for the riders, a big train of them. What we're used to seeing here in the RNG British Talent Cup effectively is uh, the first lap generally quite exciting. Then they'll start to splinter off into their own groups. Oh, Ronnie Harris really, really deep on the brakes there on board the Kavara Project RS Racing bike. Just about managed to get that one stopped. Yeah, dead easy to do that. There's a couple of little bumps going in that upset your, your bike on the brakes. Obviously, you're braking more with the front end that means the rear's loose and if you hit those bumps the rear can can get in the air a little bit too much once it's in the air more than about three or four inches you've got to release some of the front brake pressure brown there just sitting behind correa at the moment they all go through in towards the final couple of corners on this lap everybody's made it relatively cleanly so far you can see there just the background that's the number 14 that's bill harris younger brother to ronnie who we just saw going a little bit deep oh correa's going for a lunge that's oh goodness me he got his nose chopped off there and it's so easy for contact to happen in those sorts of circumstances it did i tell you what he had a little bit of a go couldn't back out but lucas brown did a really good job of leaving him just that sort of six eight inches of room for his tires there yeah, nice peace of mind there from Lucas Brown. So, at the end of the first lap, it is Soroviak in front then. Brown in second, Correa is in third position ahead of Brinton, then Mason Foster. Just behind them, you've got Clayton Edmonds and also Jack Burrows as well, who's having a quite brilliant uh, third race here so far. When did Burrows start on the grid? He was, he was 11, so he's made some good progress up inside the top 10 and clinging on to those other riders as Brown there having a look on the inside. No rain through for him at the moment. You can see just how much momentum they have to take through these corners here, James. Yeah, it's key to riding these smaller capacity bikes. You've got to carry the speed through the corner because you can't get it back if you get rid of it in the corner. Super bikes a lot more. And up the inside goes Lucas Brown, really clean. He's got to do that. He's a big lad on the straights, which means his shoulders stick up and out. You can see that. So he's not going to have the speed down the straight, especially when he's in fresh air himself at the front. On the brakes goes to Roviet, though. Back pass. Correa's deep on the brakes there as well on the inside of Brinton. Manages to sit it in third for now. I'll tell you what, Brown is really trying to muscle his way back past Soroviak and does He'll into go wide, turn 11. Yeah, Soroviak's going to try and repay the favour here. He's going to have trap assist on the inside here is Soroviak. Brown will do better to just try and defend that position and does so. Or does he? Because Soroviak is looking back on the inside, but no way through for there. So it's now Brown in front from Soroviak, then Correa, then Brinton. Mason Foster still in the mix there too. Yeah, but it's actually the, the leading four that have been the uh, standout four riders of this meeting, in my opinion. Despite the fact that uh, a couple of them haven't finished one of the races, that's uh, Emmanuel Brinton and Soroviak, uh, only because he was mixed up in, in uh, Brinton's uh, crash there. But these are the four we've been uh, sort of uh, looking at at the front most of the time this weekend. Yeah, they have been brilliant so far yeah. uh, this weekend. As you say, there is Correa. Oh, he's trying to get two for the price of one into turn one. I tell you what, it's a fast place to go and launch a move there. You need to have a willing dance partner. Correa does get the better of Brown. Yeah, you just need somebody who's got a little bit of, uh, what's the word, respect for you. And I think these lads, for the most part, and I've been watching around the track as well when we've not been on, uh, on comms, have that. 
Yeah, they've not been sort of, you know, bashing Elba. I mean, I say no. that, aside from when we came to the line earlier on in race two, actually. Yeah, I, I, I don't, from the last corner to the line, uh, Brinton and it was Brown were having a real sort of, uh, no, Correa, sorry. Correa, yeah. We're having a real set to. When they were level, it wasn't like they were trying to get in each other's slipstream, and it's still going off here again. You can see that about the quickest of the riders in terms of outright speed around the corners, I think, is Lucas Brown. Uh, that's your man there in second on the white and sort of turquoise bike. He just looks to have a little bit of an edge around the corners at least, corner speed, etc. But he's a big lad uh, and he's, he's way above the minimum uh, bike and rider weight, which is 148. You're ballasted if you're a light rider and you're in it less than that for you and the bike. You're ballasted to, to make it up to that. He's 166, so he's carrying a bit of... of uh, extra weight and he's also a bigger lad which sticks out into the breeze which makes a difference on these yeah he's also the same sort of story for emmanuel print today correct he's, yeah he's, he's yeah. six foot the six foot lads did yeah. both six footers yeah. yeah i know must have been eating the greens or something like that over uh, uh, over the last few years and well they've absolutely shot up and you can see they managed to make these bikes look very small indeed yeah and they are small uh, they are really small bikes it just in this class sometimes uh, and that that's actually Lucas Brown, if you saw what he tore off, that wasn't a tear-off visor. That was a little strip of tape from the radiator to keep the tape, because the temperature has gone up. You can't run them cool, so you put strips of tape on, you use a little bit of wire that to your handlebars, and then you pull it off as the engine warms up. Yeah, I was saying to uh, team manager down at Fiber Tech Honda earlier, Nathan, uh, he was you know, showing me uh, through Josh Brannister's crash and you know saying about the damage to the bike and so on and so forth. But he said, you know, I said, what about the temperature? What are you doing? He said, yep, strips on the radiator, yep. riders will pull it off. He said, we generally try not to do that, but some other teams, as you say, will be doing that just to make sure they don't run too cold or too hot. Yeah, basically you've got an optimum, uh, everything, all the, the tolerances within the engine, the piston to, to bore tolerances and, and a, a lot more tolerances are set up to run between, uh, in a window of temperature if you like, so you don't run too cold, uh, they can seize and if you run too warm you lose power. Out of turn eight we go then, five riders, all line of stern. Fair old gap actually now back to the likes of Ryan Frost and Clayton Edmonds. Ollie Walker's also in the mix there as well. You can see a good gaggle of riders also involving Harley McCabe and Ronnie Harris. Yeah, and this is the four fastest riders throughout the weekend uh, with uh, Frost just clinging on by the skin of his teeth and looking after me. And he's been a bit unlucky as Frost. He could have had, uh, he could have had at least one more really decent result after getting swiped in uh, Brinton's action. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's good opportunities here for some of these riders to make forward progress over the course of this race. Through the left-hander we go. You can see just how much momentum they're carrying. Leg dangling there for Julian Correa, the Floridian rider. Hails from Jupiter in Florida, actually, as well, which isn't a place I ever knew existed. And I said his ride was from another planet yesterday, and it's uh, yeah. certainly proof to me. I, I've had his dad, Mike, telling me all about it. He's uh, south of Orlando and north of Miami. It's very beautiful. It extends about 20 miles inland, but it is there because it's got a nice beach. Well, there you go. And also, he flies to and from America through the races. I, I wondered if he might be based over in the UK, but... He you know. he, he did base himself in the UK, but I think the weather drove him back to... <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're in Spain for the first time. Here round. comes Sorovac again up the inside of Brown as it worked. You don't know until you get to turn two. Yeah. No, it hasn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's Brown there we're holding the momentum yeah. round the outside. Yeah. Really nice stuff there for uh, Lucas Brown, who's looking close onto the back of Julian Correa through that left hand that we go. I tell you what, this first sector here almost reminds me a bit of Aragon, you know, as they head into the wall section. Yeah, it, um, it, a hilly circuit in Spain will always remind you of Aragon. It's not quite as uh, kind of up and down as Aragon. It's a lovely circuit here, same as Aragon. Yeah, that's a little cool. bit of a move there from Correa. Yeah, and Brinton's trying to join in on the action as well. Just yeah. sits in third place for now, but it was getting a bit argy-bargy there through seven and eight. Yeah, but I must say the layout, when you look at a map, is very typically modern Spanish circuit in that you've got a long, long start and finish straight compared to the rest of the track, and then the squiggly bit around the back, and it's, it is really similar in plan form to a lot of them. Quite tight in the last half, though, which you don't get in most places. Yeah, and of course, we're going to be setting new records here this weekend, but they're all going to be a bit for nothing because the circuit's going to be redeveloped later on this year, you know, yes, new extension added. Yeah, the, the, this circuit's been here since 2010, but it's actually changed this last winter. This is, the, so this is uh, albeit just a small change to turn six, that, that was really, really tight, and it's a lot more open, a lot better now, but the, none of the, uh, even... Uh, any of the, the lap records that stands in the last 10 years from when it was built or 12 years uh, will be accurate because it's changed. Well, this is a good battle going on here. You've got Clayton Edmonds on board the City Lifting RS racing bike just ahead of Ryan Frost, teammate Ollie Walker right behind there as well. 
as I said, I was down talking to Nathan, the team manager, earlier on, and he said that you know the plan is for Ryan and Ollie to kind of work together, learn their racecraft, and hopefully they'll be able to teach each other a thing or two. Just behind them, you've got Ronnie Harris, you've got Emmanuel Brinter there. Again, ducking that leg to the inside as you go through turn one. He did that in race two, you know. Uh, this is Philip Siroviak. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, put, he put both legs out there, and I'm, yeah, I'm sure you, I'm sure you're dead right. Yeah. I'm sure what that is is him steadying the bike by putting. Because you think 140 miles an hour on these going into that turn one, you get it. You would get a lot of what you call, I don't know, parachute effect from sticking you. And he's not a small lad himself, is it, Sir Robiak? Yeah, imagine like you know. Going along the motorway and sticking an umbrella out the window. Sort no, of thing. sticking your knee out. Of the, yeah, <laughs> what are you doing hour, on yeah. the motorway? Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah I thought so. Yeah. So in towards eight we go. Then it is uh, Correa that leads. Then Brinton now up into second at the expense of Brown. Mason Foster there just keeping an eye on proceedings. Hasn't really featured too much in this, but he's still there and thereabouts with his pace. Oh, look at this Brown. Bit wiggly under braking. Just about manages to gather it up and then slots in behind Brinton. I think Brinton and uh, Sarovia were exchanging a few glances after yesterday's crash. There goes Brown, back through on the inside. He's got a really good line there. You you think that when he's gone in that quick and taken uh, the position, that he's going to push him, uh, clearly push him wide on the outs, on the out, exit the corner and cost him time. And he doesn't. He's got a really nice line there. Put me into the mind of a British Land Cup rider here Whit, as well. So let's say, for example, you're Emmanuel Brinton. You're observing the two riders in front. What sort of things are you looking out for? You're looking for where they're making mistakes, where their line is, where you think you can have a little bit of a chance. But actually what I think they're thinking now is just have a go when you can, keep in the mix. Dead easy in a, in a situation like this to, to have the pace to run at the front but get shuffled to the back of the pack and end up in fifth and sixth. Well, across the timing line we go then to begin lap seven. Now at the halfway stage of this third and final British Talent Cup race and it is still Correa who holds firm in front there is Brinton looking again to the inside of Brown goes to that tighter line but doesn't decide to make anything of it maybe just a bit of a dress rehearsal for later on in the race perhaps Brown there a really good momentum he carries Me out of that Megan, third corner I was just going to say really really good corner speed for uh, for Lucas Brown there out of turn three it's the second season of the British Land Cup. A couple of podiums he took last year at Silverstone MotoGP. And he now hits the front for the first time in a little while as well. In a little bit of a way, this is what he's got to do and Emmanuel Brinton because they've got to make it on the twisty bits because they're not going to make it on the straights. So the smaller riders with less front frontal area uh, and a little bit less weight to carry are going to have the advantage on the straight. Yeah, down this back straight we then go. You can see there Brown darting to the inside, trying to break that slipstream of Julian Correa. Yeah, you've got to watch what you're doing there because that's been so dangerous in the past, even going back to my day on 1-2008s, that they've actually banned that. You're not allowed to weave about down the straights, and if, you, if they deem it a dangerous move, then you'll be penalised. Yeah, we have seen a few examples of that in the last and couple that, of years. Honestly, yeah. that's quite right. I don't agree with some rules. I definitely agree with that. I've seen some horrendous crashes in just that situation. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree with that. So Brown on the brakes, in the lead, into the right. You do get the impression he's not going to make anything of it, though, because now that's that's all right. That's legal. He's, that's one move across to the other side of the track. He was going into that corner anyway. It's what you do on the straights that's the important bit. He, he's probably, this is Lucas Brown going to go across to the pit lane. Let's have a look. He's going to the inside. That's what he's going to do. You're allowed to do that. And that just... That, what that does, there's no sort of advantage in terms of still air or whatever you hear, all this sort of thing, but it just kind of makes the riders behind you think about where they are on track and getting near to that pit wall. You can see there Correa with the advance in the straight line. I mean, that would that, that, be good confidence for him, though, especially into the, you know, the last stages of this race. Well, wouldn't it? what Julian Correa will be doing is thinking, if that is a situation on the last lap, coming out of the last turn, can I get... In, it will... Add, win the drag race to the line and he thinks he probably can I think from that tell you what Mason Foster again having a really he's good ride it. he's having a really yep. good ride is the, the lad from Igba um, it's his rookie season in the British Talent Cup he's raced in the Spanish uh, Moto4 Championship so there's every chance he's probably got a bit of experience here like Emmanuel Brinton as well and that could be helping him a little bit uh, here this weekend uh, Mason Foster um, where's he from uh, he's from Igba 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 and Ig do you know what it is go on pub quiz time Thetford 
Fe- oh, okay, there you, there you go. There you go, you see. I know, because I did an enduro once down there. I've heard your pub quiz questions. I'm glad you're not the quiz master tonight. Yes. <laughs> I've got some of my own for you later, don't oh, worry. Goodness me, we need to get the Riocas in for yeah, that it, one. Yeah, it was down here at Thetford in, uh, in Norfolk. Yep, that's uh, that's near uh, Ryan Vickers' part of the woods, isn't it? It is exactly yeah. Ryan Vickers. He'll be... Oh, oh, hey, up a minute. We've got a couple of... We've got a ride of this one down. Michael Ice Cresswell racing bike that has ended up on its side. He's all right. Yeah, he's up and OK. Yep. And uh, walking away from that one, the yellow flag will he's be out. Looking that, at, I tell you what, he's looking at his wrist. Let's... Yeah, this is turn six. Let's have a look. Oi, that's a nasty little eyesight is that. You see the airbag's gone off in the leather. You can see the sort of cushioning, but the balloon kind of come out the front there. Yeah, Tyler King, the rider that's uh, yep. gone down there. He's up and okay. You can see. He's all right. Yeah, the marshal's tending. One to of the thing, one of the things the marshals have to do is get get the zip down on others because he, as as well as protecting you, it kind of squeezes your lungs in, and it, if you you, you, might, you might be winded anyway. So you've got to get the zip down. Yeah, I know. I've, I've had an airbag go off before when I've been on track and somebody, you know, said to me, oh, you'll know about it when it goes off. I'm like, yeah, sure you will. And then it goes off and it's like someone, it's, a, it's like you've had a whack it, to the ribs. Yeah, it's a big bang, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it, has to, it has to go off really quick. Otherwise, well, no point. Yeah. Well, it shows a lot about my riding skills anyway. <laughs> At the front, Julian Correa leads the way on lap 9 out of 14. Emmanuel Brinson still very much in there. Lucas Brown just in the middle of those two at the moment. Through into the left. This is where we saw King going down a few moments ago. Yellow flag has uh, ceased to be there, so all OK. And they can carry on at racing speed as they head through. You can just see the marshals just on the outside of the gravel. But all good as we go on the brakes into turn 8. You can see there, Brown not just... Dis- just deciding to sort of sit behind Correa, not dive to the inside and compromise the exit coming onto this straight. Yeah, he does that, but I don't think there's that much he can do at this stage in the race except stay, stay where he is. He's doing that. I mean, can't really see a lot of point in keeping battling his way to the front through the twisty bits just to get passed down the straight because even if he's behind a rider going onto the straight, as long as he's sat there in the slipstream, he can stay where he is. Just looking at two Fiber Tech Hondas here, Ronnie Harris now ahead of Ryan Frost. Frost, who made a meteoric start from the third row of the grid and was up challenging almost for the lead at the first corner. Just dropped back down now into seventh place, following Walker as Brinton goes to Correa's inside. Yep, oh, Correa has to sit up. Has he missed the gear there? Oh, he's yep. got a problem. Something going wrong with the bike. Yeah, unfortunately, it's all gone wrong it's for stopped. Julian Correa. Computer says no. And he comes to a very disappointing halt on lap nine and the Floridian will not make it a visit to the podium here this afternoon after uh, winning yesterday second this morning that had uh, been going wrong for a couple of corners because we saw him in the lead and then the change of shot uh, only a, a few seconds later Brown was at the front well what a shame there it does eliminate one rider from this front group though which will be music to the ears of the top three now let's see how this is all going to play out as Correa retires with that technical. So Brown it is now that leads from Brinton, from Philip Sarovia, the winner from race two. Then Mason Foster now up into fourth place. Good result for the uh, rookie on his debut weekend. This in the class. is, and he, he's kind of, he's, he's, he's grown in strength a bit here, isn't he? Yeah, really he's, good. He's learning from these lads. Oh, that's the thing, is it, whatever happens here for Mason Foster, he's going to have learned so much exactly. this weekend, you know about racecraft of other riders that he's going to be with hopefully all season long. Yeah, and you might as well learn from the front boys as anybody else. Absolutely. Well, it does also give an opportunity here for uh, some other riders as well. Of course, now everybody behind Correa moving up a position. So Walker now goes up into fifth, Frost into sixth, etc. Brown is really pushing on, actually. Let's have a look at the lap times last time around. 10 thousandths quicker than Brinton across the timeline. Actually, the f- uh, fastest of the top four was Soroviak with a 50.2. So it's about a tenth of a second faster or so, but they're pretty even Stevens. As you can see, the nose tail running here between Walker, Frost, etc. A little bit further back as well, you've got uh, Harrison Mackay. This is on board the number 61, just in the front of your shot. Dan Goodman on another of the fiber tech honors. They've got six bikes on the grid here this yeah. year. So you're not going to be uh, missing any Fibertech machines. No, Chris, the boss of the company Fibertech, uh, obviously a very keen uh, and passionate about his bike racing. He's here, I've been chatting with him, nice fella. Yes, the new name for the MLAV Racing Squad, by the way, as yep. well. That's what Fibertech Honda are uh, for this year. And they've been pretty instrumental in developing riders, uh, British riders' careers over the last few years. Of course, in Moto3, they've still got Scott Ogden and Josh Watley at the helm there. And that is what some of these young lads will be aspiring for one day and this is the first rung on the ladder for many and actually got to apologize it's senka uh, is chris the uh, 
the company director, I'm sorry. So through into the left we go. Three laps now remaining. Here is Mason Foster on Na the Sublime Designs machine. And it is Sublime Design. It's a lovely oh. looking bike, is that? I, just, I have used to have one of my trap bikes wrapped by them, actually. They're up um, probably not far from Norfolk, to be honest with you. And... Um, yeah, they do, good, they do a nice really, job, really good job. Yep. And it's nice and distinguishable, which is great for us here in the commentary box. Well, that's the thing with the race bike. You don't need a mega finish, like a mirror finish when you get close to it. Cause it's going past 150 miles an hour. What you want is a striking design in terms of kind of overall design. And that is, it's lovely. Oh, yeah. Sticks out like a fourth nostril, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. So on the brakes we go. Which is probably quite common in... No, I can't say <laughs> it. Can't say it. Can't say it. I'm not saying it. So, Lucas Brown leads the way through the right. On the brakes into turn 11 we go. <laughs> and maybe not Brinton sitting there in second. <laughs> Steady now. Right, 11th lap of 14. And you, I'll tell you what we've got here. This is interesting because you've got your two bigger lads at the front. So... Yeah, look over the shoulder there for uh, Lucas Brown. He's just keeping a brief on what's happening on behind him here at the moment. And I tell you what, Emmanuel Brinton, if he doesn't take the tops of the podium, at least in one race this weekend, he'll be so disappointed. He's one of the few riders that's actually got experience here. For the best part of this weekend, he's been quicker than anybody in terms of single lap. Single lap on your own when you're a big fella sometimes is easier than when you're in a pack because you get shuffled to the back on the straights. Yeah, and he now takes Looks over at the that. front. Yeah, good amount of straight line speed there for uh, Manuel Brinton. Maybe just setting up something for the final lap here. You can see how close it gets on the brakes as we head in towards turn three. Oh, Brown with a lunch to the inside. Sits up Emmanuel Brinton. Not so much a lunge. That was a nice, smooth move, that. But we've seen him really quick there before. He's always keen to get to the front there just so he can have a go at getting away around the ne this next little bit of track. He's quick here. Yeah, really has got a good amount of confidence in the front end especially in this first sector that's where brown looks really strong i tell you what mason foster i was wondering if he might be on for a podium yeah. here he's now right on the back yeah. of philip soroviak so we're possibly on for from a three-way to a four-way scrap for this victory it's not over here for the rookie it's not out of turn eight we go then let's see how this is all going to play out as we head on the brakes in towards turn nine brown it is that leads soroviak darts to the inside here of brinton does he go for the move no not quite just decides to wait for Another opportunity. Now we're going to start seeing riders beginning to pull the pin a little bit. I think the pace is going to start to pick up. Where were we last time around? We're at 149, mid-149s, late 149s, there and thereabouts. But it is, it is just kicking up a little bit now. Uh, they are trying a bit harder because the, the fastest lap was on the last lap. So then, in towards the final few turns of this lap we go. We'll have two laps left at the end of this one and it is Lucas Brown who still holds the advantage. He's ridden so well so far this weekend. Unlucky to miss out on the podium here this morning and he would love to open his account here today with another uh, visit to the rostrum but he's got three riders very close behind who would love to be able to do the same as well. Across the line we go then. Slipstream time for these riders. Let's see whether Foster is able to get involved in the X as well. And look at that, Brinton, Soroviak and Foster all going to mug Br uh, Brown here as they all go around the outside. Brown's going to go back on the inside here of Brinton into turn two. Sits him up. This and is brave stuff, this, isn't it? Yeah, this is it. 130 miles an hour through that corner easily on these sorts of machines and they are absolutely flat to the handlebars as they try to build the pressure up now and it is Soroviak who's in front for the first time now on the RS City lifting bike. Yep, I know we've seen uh, Correa have a bit of a problem with the bike but these uh, 254 stroke single Hondas generally absolutely bulletproof. Yeah, Brown there with just amazing confidence on the front end into turn six and turn seven as well. That could pay dividends for him coming on to the final lap. So, fastest lap last time around between these top three riders was actually Mason Foster. He was the only one who was in the 149s, whilst the rest of them started making some moves and upsetting the other's rhythm. Foster was there quickest of the lot. They've got a nice comfortable cushion to everybody else behind, so it needs to be four riders battling as we come into that right-hander, into turn 11. We've seen a few lose the front in some other races, including the BMWs, actually, earlier on here this afternoon as well. No such problems, though, for these Talent Cup riders. For your money... What do you reckon? I would like to say Lucas Brown, but I think he's going to get out dragged to the line. I don't think he's going to be able to put a, a, enough time in the twisty bits to get enough in front not to be slipstream past. So, That's my... So I think possibly... You know, 
It's hard to call, isn't it? It really hard to call. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. That's, that, good that's thing. what we love about the British Talent Cup. Is it doesn't matter where you watch the racing, there is always something going on. And we've got four riders in the fight for victory then as we begin the final lap here at Navarra. Mason Foster goes to the inside of Emmanuel Brinton. Soroviak it is that leads the way then now from Lucas Brown. Foster looking to Brown's inside. Who is going to be on the brakes the latest? On the inside goes Brinton. Foster's going to get shuffled out wide in towards turn three we go. This though is where Lucas Brown has been very good. Yeah, and, it, and it needs to be this lap because it needs the, the, the middle part of the, this circuit, the twisty bits to get enough in front to have an even chance of it. He's had a go here before going into turn six. He thinks better of it on this occasion. Sorovia has got it covered, but Sorovia has wide. Here comes Brown then into the left-hander and he gets himself through and into the lead. What about Brinton? Is he going to try and join in on the party as well? On the brakes we go in towards turn eight. It's all about the exit here. You don't want to compromise this corner because it'll mean that you're losing time all the way down this straight and it is Brown that's still got the advantage for now. You're not going to have it at the end up. Soroviak there looks to his outside. What about Brinton as well? Soroviak, Soroviak, can he do it? Still Brown. He's trying to. Brown does hold firm though on the Senkat Honda for the time being. I'll tell you what, Brinton, he's ready to try and pounce here on this RS racing bike. Is he going to go for the move on the inside at 211? No, not quite. Brown and Soroviak stay in first Brown's and second. Brown's really good there. He's lovely, isn't he? Yeah. Absolute cream and almonds on this bike. So smooth through this sector of the lap and he's holding on to this advantage at the moment. Brinton's looking to the inside of Soroviet though. This could upset the rhythm of the Polish rider and does. And now it is Brinton in front. So two corners now remaining. Let's see how this is going to play out. Brown with the advantage there. Watch for Here comes the Brinton. Inside. He's going to go for the lunge at the final corner. Can he get the bike stopped though? He's going to run it deep. Brown's going to cut back through. That might give it Brown. This could be a drag to the line once again in race three. It's Brown, Brinton, Soroviak and Foster. It's who takes Brown, the check of flag first? Brown. It's Lucas Brown who takes it by just eight thousandths of a second from Emmanuel Brinton. Mason Foster on the podium in his first weekend in third as well. And Soroviak does come across the line in fourth position. What a phenomenal end once again in the RNG British Talent Cup. Ryan Frost comes home fifth ahead of Ronnie Harris, Ollie Walker, Clayton Edmonds, and then Jack Burrows with Charlie Huntingford completing the top ten. What a finish, though. Brilliant finish, and what handed that uh, to Lucas Brown was the fact that Brinton tried to come uh, around the inside at the last corner, ran it wide, and that just defended him of anybody else getting near. Brilliant, brilliant ride that from Brown, and a little bit of luck as well. I think if the, the line had been another 50 yards further on, it'd have been second. Yeah, phenomenal. Good ride, lad. Really, really good stuff there. Intelligent riding from Lucas Brown was there right when it mattered, and uh, second place it was yesterday. Yeah, so watch this. Brinton goes up the inside. Brown sees him, gives him the room to run wide so he can cut back up the inside, and what that does is just look Brinton will slot right back in behind, behind Brown but that then defends Brown effectively from behind from anybody else but even then Brinton gets in the slipstream and another 50 metres he would have been in front yeah two very large lads on the ball these bikes in terms of height I mean that by the way and uh, it was always going to be a challenging affair down to the check and flag you can see there Brown Watch trying to break that toe from Brinton. Soroviak's there and thereabouts, and Foster manages to pit the pole yep. for third on the line there too. Fantastic. Great race. Yeah, I mean, that's the top three, separated by 71 hundredths of a second. And a clean race. Yeah, really, really good. Emmanuel Brinton, fastest lap it is for him, and second place at the chequered flag. So two podiums in two races then for Lucas Brown. Emmanuel Brinton gets two podiums in two races as well, courtesy of that one he got uh, this morning where he was third and now finishes in second. And Mason Foster, his first visit to the rostrum in his first weekend. And here is Samuel Munson on his cool down lap, the Munson burner on board the Wilson Racing Honda. Where did Sam finish? He was 22nd, 22nd. at the chequered flag. Yep. Considering he was on the deck this morning in a pretty frightening crash, yep. that's not bad at all it there, isn't. Sam Munson. And now the riders making their way back into Park Ferme for the final time here this weekend. And it is going to be Lucas Brown who takes top honours. So three different winners in three races to begin the 2024 season. And let's confirm those results.
Well, another frenetic affair in race three. It's Lucas Brown by eight thousandths of a second, the victor over Emmanuel Brinton. Mason Foster in third place ahead of Philip Soroviak, who just lost out on the line to the BRP Racing rider. Ryan Frost in fifth place, best of the rest, ahead of Ronnie Harris and Ollie Walker. Then Clayton Edmonds, Jack Burrows and Charlie Huntingford completing the top ten. Holly McCabe just outside. Uh, in 11th place on the McCabe racing machine ahead of the Microlyze Cresswell, Cresswell racing bike of Peter Willis. Well, I think we were pretty pleased with that considering where he started the race. Harrison Mackay, Ben Jaliff and Dan Goodman completing the final points scorers here in this one as well. You can see Scott McPhee, Bose, Rowan, Raymond Jr and Eli Banish complete the top 20. And let's see what it means in the championship standings as well. After three races in 2024, Lucas Brown has a 13-point advantage going into the next one ahead of Julian Correa and Philip Soroviak, who in turn is just one point ahead of Frost. He in turn also has a one-point advantage over Emmanuel Brinton. So what's that? Five riders separated by less than one race victory, tantalizingly close at this early stage in the season. So good points for other riders further down the order as well. Harrison Mackay adding to his points tally here this afternoon. Likewise, Ben Jaliff as well. And Dan Goodman, of course, being the final, final points finisher. Lucas, that was incredible. You fought tooth and nail for that one. Better be happy with it. Yeah, I'm super happy. Um, I've been working hard with Carl Smith over the winter and uh, he phoned me last night and he said he thinks that if I can just keep him enough on the straight, I could have broke. So that was the game plan coming in and uh, I just tried to lead as many laps as I can. And then uh, coming onto the final lap, Philip passed me into turn one. And I got him straight back and then it was just like hammer down, trying to break as much as I can. But I made a few mistakes in the final lap, but kept it clean enough and, uh, yeah, held him off to the line. That last lap was carnage. What was it like? Oh, there was bikes everywhere. To be fair, I got kind of lucky. I was out in front the whole time. But, um, yeah, I could hear everyone behind me. Well done, mate. Thank you. Yeah, very well done to Lucas Brown, the winner of race three of the RNG British Talent Cup. Well, he tried to lead as many laps as possible. Unfortunately, he led on the lap when it counted. A brilliantly decisive move to the inside of Emmanuel Brinton at the final corner. Managed to let Brinton run wide, got back through on the switchback on the inside. And as such, Brown managed to uh, take the lead back from Brinton and hold it until the chequered flag. And now for one final time, we'll wait for the top three riders to make their way on to the podium here. Looking forward to seeing what their celebrations are going to be like. Next time we'll see these riders out will actually be not until the middle of May, so about a month's time at Donington Park at the Grand Prix circuit. Good race, that. Huh? Yeah, really, really good. I enjoyed, yeah. enjoyed that bit, you know. Yeah. I tell you what, Mason Foster yeah, deserves it. Really, really good. Yeah, you know, first weekend for him. Yep. Norfolk based lad and on to the podium on the Sublime Designs machine. And the sublime performance it was from Mason Foster. Manny Brinton, two podiums in two races, one this morning with third place, and he goes one better for second here. But this man, Lucas Brown, he's had two podiums in three races in 2024, one of which is now a visit to the top step of the podium as he opens his checkbook in the RNG British Talent Cup for this season. Delight for Mason Foster in his opening weekend of the championship. Manuel Brinton seems happy enough. I think he'd be a little bit disappointed to miss out on the top step given his experience at this circuit. I think so. But nonetheless, an opportunity for redemption when we head to Donington Park. And delight for Lucas Brown then as he takes the victory here for race three this afternoon. Well, let's have a look then, shall we, at highlights from the third and final race of the weekend for the RNG British Talent Cup. It saw Philip Soroviak kicking it off from pole position, and he held the advantage down to the first corner with Ryan Frost on the Fibertech Honda making a supreme start. Unfortunately, though, for him, it wouldn't last, and he would eventually fall back into the rest of the pack. Been the status quo that we've seen five riders 
fighting at the sharp end of the field, and so it would prove to be here in race three this afternoon. We had Soroviak, Correa, Brown, Brinton and Foster all at the sharp end of the field, exchanging blows lap after lap, corner after corner. And it was a hugely exciting affair. We did see Tyler King going down the road in a big old high side at turn six. Thankfully for the Microlyze Cresswell racing rider, he was able to get up and was okay following that. We later lost Julian Correa following a technical problem, which left it as a four-way fight at the sharp end of the field. Soroviak it was who was leading the way at this point, but Brown had really strong pace here, especially coming through the left-hander of turn six. A lot of confidence in the front end of that Senkat Honda proving to be to his advantage. It came down, though, to the final corner. Emmanuel Brinton sending it to the inside of Lucas Brown. Wasn't quite able to get it stopped, though. Brown sent it back through up the inside and held it to the line to take victory by just eight thousandths of a second here in Navarra.